In life, we go through many different types of tests, trials, challenges. We go through uh, distress, we go through anxiety, we go through depression, we go through grief, we go through misfortunes. Allah says, Do people think? that they will be left alone because they say we believe do you think that that's it you're not going to be tested you're not going to be trialed we indeed tested those who were before them and Allah will certainly make it known the truth of those who are true and will certainly make it known the falsehood of those who are liars who are the ones who will continue with their belief? Who are the ones who are going to deviate? Just because they've been now struck with a calamity. That there are some people, they worship Allah right on the edge. Whenever something good happens to him, he is happy with it. But if a trial befalls him, he reverts to his former ways. He loses both the dunya and the akhirah. He loses both worlds. We must understand and we must remember that life is filled with trials, with challenges, with hardships. Some of these trials can be very, very difficult and some not so difficult. It could be a child. It could be a difficult spouse. You could have a sickness. This sickness may be temporary. This sickness may be chronic. If you've got it all the time. This sickness may be terminal. Some people like cancer. Sometimes we have people are poor. Poverty or for example, you lose a loved one somebody that's dear to you could be a family member could be a relative You know could be a friend. This is something which is very uh, very difficult to deal with It could be that you lose your job It could be that you lose a prized possession something that's really dear to you, you lose it It could be that imprisonment so as you can hear the challenges in life are many You don't know where they're going to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Again, is telling us it's a test. This world that we live in, brothers and sisters in Islam, it's a transitory life. We are in this life only for a short period of time. Some people, it befits them to be wealthy. Being wealthy might keep them on the straight path. Some people, it befits them to be poor. Because if they were rich, they'll be misguided. Some people, it, it befits them, it is better for them to be sick. If they were in good health, they would not remember Allah. So we don't know how the trials come and where they come from. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We test you with both evil and good as a trial. The, the story that I want to share with you is a story about a leper and a bold man and a blind man. And its origins are in Bukhari and Muslim. He's narrating to us from amongst the Banu Israel. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends this leper an angel and he says to him, what thing do you like most? He said, I want to have a good color because the people have a strong aversion. They want to always, you know, keep away from me. So the angel touched him and he was skewered and he was given good color and he was given good skin. As a bonus, the angel said, what type of wealth would you like? And he said, uh, he said, I would like to have some camels. So he gave him a, a she camel because that way she, she can give birth to other camels. And he said, but Allah bless this camel for you. Then the angel came to the bold headed man. And he said, what thing would you like the most? He said, I would like to, you know, have some hair and be cured of this. I would like to have this. The people feel, you know, people look at me in a strange way. You have this repulsion to me. So the angel, he touched him and, and he was cured and he, and he was given good hair. And he said, what uh, type of uh, wealth would you like? He said, I would like to have uh, some cows. So he gave him a pregnant cow and he said, may Allah bless it for you. Then he comes to who? The blind man. And the blind man asked the same thing. What thing would you like? He said, I would like for my eyesight to be restored so that I may see the people. He said, okay, he touched his eyesight and he gave him back his eyesight. He said, what, what wealth would you like? He said, I would like to have sheep. So then he gave him a pregnant uh, sheep. And afterwards, all the three pregnant uh, 
uh, animals they gave birth to the young ones until each one of these people they had a valley of these animals okay so much wealth then the test time came about the angel he came disguised in the shape of a leper to who to the one who used to be a leper and he said look I'm a poor man who has lost all of his means of livelihood while um, I was on a journey and no one's going to be able to satisfy my need except Allah and then you he said in the name of him who has given you such nice color and beautiful skin I ask you to give me a camel so that I may reach my destination so what did this ex leper he said he said I have many obligations and the angel said were you not a leper from before? Didn't you used to be also a leper and the people had a strong aversion to? Weren't you a poor man and Allah gave you all of this? He goes, no, 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 no. That's not me. You've got it wrong. That's, I'm, not the, I'm not that person. I got this property through my forefathers. I, I inherited all of this. So then the angel said, if you are telling a lie, then let Allah make you as you were before. Then the angel comes in the shape and the disguise of uh, a bold man. Okay, and he comes up to the ex-bold. Okay, and he says to him the same thing that he said to the ex-leper and they both say exactly the same response. And then he says, if you are telling a lie, then let Allah make you as you were, as you were before. So the angel now comes in the disguise of the blind man. And um, he says to him, I'm a poor man, I'm a traveler, I've lost all means. You know, I put my trust in Allah and then you, I ask you by the one who has given you beautiful eyesight to give me a sheep so I can complete my journey. Now, now listen to the response of the blind man the blind man he said no doubt I was blind and Allah gave me back my eyesight and I was poor and Allah made me rich so take anything you wish from my property he said wallahi I will not stop you from taking anything that you need from my property would you take for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake so then the angel said to him keep your property with you he said you three men you have been tested and Allah is pleased with you and he is angry with your two companions. When we look at the people of uh, the past and we look at the prophets specifically, we see that they were tested. Why is Allah Azza wa Jal mentioning these stories just so we can uh, enjoy those stories? There are lessons to be deduced. There are morals that we need to take heed of. In the authentic hadith in Bukhari, he said, the people that receive the most severe trials and tribulations are the prophets of Allah and then the like and the like. Nuh alayhi salam, his da'wah, he's calling people to la ilaha illallah was for 950 years. How many followers did he have? He only had a handful of followers that were enough to go onto an ark or a ship or a boat. That was it. In 950 years. So there are going to be challenges in da'wah. Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam, he had an illness that, that lasted 18 years and the people would be again turning away from him and running away from him. Yusuf alayhi salam, he was trialed with the envy, the envy of his brothers towards him. He was thrown into a well. He was sold as a slave. He had so much beauty that a woman wanted to seduce him. On top of all of this, he spends eight years in jail. He's a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, what about Khalilullah, the, the best friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ibrahim alayhi salam, how was he trialed? He was thrown into a fire. Yunus alayhi salam, it is said three days and three nights in the belly of, of a big fish, of a whale. Prophet Musa alayhi salam with the children of Israel. Every type of evil present in their society, they had. And then we have the trials and tribulations of the best man who ever walked on the face of this earth, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. He grows up as what? As an orphan. His mother, she dies when he's some six years old. His grandfather dies a couple of years later. His uncle dies. Also, he loses Khadija. He loses his children, three sons, Abdullah and Al-Qasim and Ibrahim. All of them die. He's trialed with envy. He's trialed with jealousy. He's called names. He's called a madman. He's called a magician. He's called a poet. He's called all sorts of names. So we need to remember these trials and tribulations of the people of the past. And then there's the Sahaba Bilal and Uthman and Umar and Khabbab ibn al-Arat. And the list goes on. 
So don't think that you are alone in your trial or in your tribulation or in your hardship or in your challenge. Trials and afflictions from Allah serve as a wake-up call. They remind you and I that this life is only the enjoyment of deception. Another reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may put us through trials and tribulations, that one of the wisdoms to cleanse them of the sins. It's a, it's a form of purification and detoxifying you of your sins. In Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, no fatigue, no disease, no sorrow, no sadness, no hurt, no distress that befalls a Muslim, even if it were the prick he receives from a thorn. But Allah expiates some of his sins for that. When you're going through that stress, that hardship, that challenge, know that Allah is rewarding you as long as you are patient. And you don't act in a way that is showing unacceptance of this in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From amongst all, also the, the, uh, the reasons that have been mentioned, they're a sign that Allah loves you. The, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said in Bukhari, he said, whenever Allah wills good for a person, he subjects him to an adversity. He gives him a hardship. What is the mother of reasons behind our misfortunes? In most cases, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will trial us as a result of our sins and our shortcomings towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and neglecting the Quran, neglecting the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or engaging in heretical acts, innovation. This is all what leads to uh, many different types of trials. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that corruption has appeared in both the land and in the sea because of what people's own hands, because of what people's own hands have brought about, so that they may taste some of what they have done, so that hopefully they will turn back. What is the cure? The remedy, the cure is number one, to have the correct belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed whatever is to happen to us. It has been decreed 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. Allah wrote it down. The next remedy is sabr, to have patience. And the Prophet wasallam he said, amazing is the state of a mu'min of a believer, that everything for a believer is khair. If he is blessed with good, he thanks Allah, and he will be rewarded for his thanks. And if a misfortune befalls him and he keeps patient, he will be rewarded for it. This is the case of a believer. Uh, another remedy is dua. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ actually said, look at those who are in a less position to you and don't look at those who are in a better position. He said, for this will enable you to appreciate the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't always look at what he has got or she's got that's better, better health, better money, better living standards. No. Look at those who have, don't have. You are better than many others. Also from amongst the ways is to contemplate the worst case scenarios. Looking also at how to transform your trials into, into gains and into profits. If you're going through hardships, turn to Salat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he was troubled by something, he would flee to the Salat. Be optimistic always, even in the eye of a storm. Always put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And know that after every hardship there comes ease. Look for the light at the end of the tunnel.